Um, I don't want to do the deal unless everybody's winning. And so we always, as you just shared, we create win-win solutions in every transaction that we do. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. as I have two very successful students of mine, they're actually in my, uh, thank you, Paula, thank you, Henrietta, two very successful students of mine that I've invited to come on, and Chaffee and I are going to interview them. So everybody, we have got Paul Hale here and Austin Steele from way over on the other side of the nation. Paul or Austin, whichever one uh, wants to tell it. First of all, tell everybody where you're located, and, and everybody, I want you all to know that Paul and Austin are very successful students of mine. And in addition to that, they are actually in my um, very top level elite group, which is my mastermind group that both Chaffee and I run. We meet in person four times a year. Uh, we'll be meeting virtually in June. We won't, uh, I don't know, we might be together. We might be virtual. We might be doing both. I don't know, Paul and Austin, we're, we we're just talking about that yesterday. But Paul and Austin, uh, share your story as to how you got into real estate, where you're located, and what your journey looks like, you know, as of now, since you got into real estate. And then, uh, Chaffee, I think Paul and Austin have got a, a short little PowerPoint presentation that they'll want to share, and we'll tell you how to do that when you're ready for that. Oh, nice. Thanks. Great. Okay. Well, so I'm Paul, and I'm the kind of started all this. Uh, I've been doing this, you know, investing in real estate for about six years now. And we operate out of southeastern Washington state. So probably a, you know, certainly a good distance away from where Jay lives and kind of a unique market here. We actually don't do foreclosure. We cannot market to foreclosures in Washington state. So I know that Jay is talking a lot about foreclosures today. And we have, in fact, just tripped over a couple of foreclosures in the process of doing normal marketing and so forth. And so we can talk about those that we've done. But but yeah, we've been doing this for about six years. I brought Austin on a couple of years ago and he's terrific. He's brilliant. He keeps everything going and I'm always going a thousand miles an hour and about a hundred directions at once. And he just kind of makes sure things actually get followed through on and actually happen. So, you know, we kind of work well together in that sense. Sure. Remind me, when did the two of you start working with me in my uh, coaching program? So in your coaching program, it was last October, but, you know, we'd seen you around, we'd seen you speak and definitely kind of aspired to want to work with you. And then when I was ready, I came all in about everything all the way up through the mastermind and everything. So, right. Yeah. exactly. What's been your experience of us working together? So it's been, let's see, five, eight, eight months or so. I lose track of time. What's your experience been since us working together? Well, I've never seen you make a promise you haven't kept. I've never seen you do anything that I felt was questionable or uh, you you are a man of integrity is what I've seen again and again. And I've seen situations where you come in, you, you've you been doing this for years. You kind of have the upper hand. You understand how to do this in a way that is beyond what most other people could understand. And with that, you could do things that would take advantage. And I've been watching and you've never done anything ever and any level that's even made me wonder if maybe you're being anything less than a man of integrity. And it's your values that make you very effective. Someone who I would want to be working with and want to continue working with. As far as your knowledgeability, it's uh, impressive. Really, really impressive. You clearly know what you're doing and you're very actively still doing those kinds of things. You're still working in your business. This is not like a academic exercise. 10 years ago, I used to have a real estate business. It's You're looking at deals right now when I come out and see you in Moorhead City. We're looking at houses you have under contract at that time, houses you've just finished working on right there. So it's super clear you're absolutely in the trenches right now. And it's very comforting to, to talk with you, ask you questions, knowing that you're right there in the trenches 
work in the same kinds of deals that I'm working and you understand exactly what I'm working on very, very well, not just from your past, but from what you're doing right now this week. So I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, what's been your personal experience, uh, Austin, since we started working together? Well, I've also been super impressed with um, your character and, and also your knowledgeability. Honestly, there's you know a lot of things that have been clarified for us and just helped us to know how to do different things that we haven't done in the past. And just a lot of super useful, uh, just very applicable information about how to build up our business to be more efficient, uh, more effective overall, and better able to help people. Wonderful. I appreciate you sharing that. And I had a note slip to me a little while ago that uh, you all have got a PowerPoint presentation that you want to share. I just want to be clear on what I am and I'm not presenting here. So I got to say, honestly, I have not used Jay's foreclosure system because we do not market directly to houses that are in foreclosure in Washington state. However, we have found amazing deals and we've heard from so many of Jay's students who are having great success with this. So my intention today is to kind of talk about foreclosures in general and what we've seen, the kinds of deals that we have found and that we have, you know, kind of tripped across, like I said earlier, in Washington State. So yeah. but what he's trying to say is you'll be able to find these deals easier than we did. So. Yes. And we'll actually, most people are finding these kinds of deals all the time. We just kind of stumble on them from time to time. We have to, you know, do other techniques to, to find our deals. But anyway, but these are fantastic. Two different deals. And there's just kind of a lot of pictures and I'll show you some numbers as well. So, and Jay, feel free to stop and ask any questions you want. So this is a little bit of a before and after. There's not much difference to the outside of the house. We found this old house. What was the deal on this house? You want to tell the story about how we found these people just real quick? Yeah. You know, we actually just sent out a letter. We sent out letters to people who are in probate and inherited house situation. And they called us up and they actually, the house was in disrepair, poop all over the carpets from the dogs, new paint needed everywhere. Just kind of really poor condition throughout. When we were in the inspection stage of things and checking things out, we found out the plumbing actually all needed to to be replaced. Anyway, so there was just a lot of different problems with it. It was also a fun situation with title. There were some issues to clean up there. And so, but they just didn't really have very many options of how they'd be able to sell it because it was in terrible shape. And we're just thrilled that we were able to even make them an offer that we can make good on, which we were able to do. Right. And this this goes back to something we, we listened in a little bit with what Lee was sharing before we got on. And about not this is not taking advantage of someone. When you see these numbers, you're gonna be like, what you guys bought? You got this much money on this house? I'm telling you right now, the brother and sister yeah. who are trying to sell this house, this is their mother's house. They were crying and praying every day for some kind of miracle to get them out of this house because they couldn't pay on it. And it was moving toward foreclosure. And they just, they felt like they each had their own homes. They didn't know what to do. When we bought this house, I mean, there were tears of joy and gratitude. And they were so, so thankful that we were able to solve so many problems that they just were not equipped to be able to solve on their own. And so, but here are the numbers on it. We bought the house, 88,000. And then we did about $13,000 worth of work on it. And then we sold it for this hundred and, you know, basically 170,000. So you're looking at our revenue is about $68,000. And so that's, that's $1,000 of my average, 67. So awesome. you beat me by a thousand bucks. <laughs> well, it's not a contest, but there we are. <laughs> so if, if it that's was awesome. a contest, Jay, you'd still yeah. be winning. You do, you do so many deals. So anyway, but this is easy to look at these numbers and think in your brain, oh, there's, you're cheating. You're taking advantage, but I'm telling you, there was raw sewage under this house. There was there were problems that these people had no capacity to resolve on their own, and they didn't have the money to even do the rehab. We were able to get the rehab done at such a low price because we've been doing so many. So we had great contractors who were able to move quickly. They knew us. They trusted us. And so we were able to just do one thing after another because that's what we decided we wanted to be doing for this house. That's what we wanted to do professionally is be flipping house. And so... That's how we were able to do that. So we, well, we bought, let's see here. So we sold one that we had just had flipped it over December, January, and then we sold it off. I mean, we signed the paperwork in March. So things were starting to get weird just a little bit. And then we bought a house in March and then sold that house in April that we just bought in March. And so, yeah, we still have been doing deals in COVID. We actually just put a house under contract on Tuesday. And so just like two days ago, three days ago. So, or was it Wednesday? 
Yeah, it's Tuesday, Wednesday anyway. And so we're still working. There is definitely still opportunity. People right now, there's a lot of situations where people are scared to sell. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of situations where people are scared to not sell. And they feel like exactly. they don't have any options. Now, I, I heard you mention as you were uh, starting to tell the, the story of this deal that uh, these people were in probate and uh, they had inherited the house and they didn't have the means to take care of it. How did you locate these people? We sent out letters, kind of like probate letters. We have our own version of probate letters. And then now as we've been working with Jay, he's got his letters are way cooler, actually. (laughs) But we had our own letter that just kind of said, look, if you want to do this, uh, if you want to sell, if you have a house that you you don't want this house or you need options, just give us a call. And the lady was cool. She, She called up, the sister called and she said, she's like, I didn't know if this was a scam or a fraud or what, but. I figured, yeah, why not? I'll just give them a call. And so she called and it was like, we'd sent the letter out and they kind of sat on it for a while. They didn't take quick action, but when they were ready to call, you know, they, as soon as they started the dialogue, we began to build rapport and we saw what was going on and we looked at the house and there were challenges. There were definitely challenges. There were extra, you know, liens. There was a government lien on the house for like a quarter million dollar we had to negotiate down. And there was just a lot of problems that needed to be solved. And that's the point. That's the whole point guys, is that if you live in a, you know, capitalist market, you get paid based on the amount of value you bring to the marketplace. So when you see this right here, the $68,000, that's the money that we made because of the value that we brought to the market. We solved problems for the seller all over the place. We solved problems for those who held liens on the house that knew they weren't going to get all of their money out, but we could at least try to resolve it and get them something. We solved problems for all of the workers who were trying to get work done and wanted to get paid. These contractors came through and we created a house that was going to be a home for the next family that bought it. And so that was the value that we actually brought to the marketplace by solving all these real problems. And so it's not about taking advantage of people at all. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Paul, I'm, I'm sorry, Austin, were you saying something? Oh, just, just a quick comment. Part of what I found, I, I was in the early conversations with the seller. Part of what I found is that um, the conversations over time and penetration with them as we were working through some of the issues related to uh, purchasing it, each conversation provided hope. And honestly, the better prepared you can be, and you know, some of you will go on to become J students, but the better prepared you can be, the more you'll be able to reassure the seller and, and provide that hope and confidence as you're going through this process. And honestly, the hope makes a big difference for people. It really does. It really does. It's hard to appreciate the level of hopelessness that someone feels as their home that they used, their mother used to live in or that they were raised in or whatever, and it's just fallen into disrepair. They can't keep it. They're going to lose it. And it, they just feel this weight and it's just, it's suffocating. And so to be able to take someone in that situation, to actually be able to provide solutions, it's an amazing experience. It's an amazing feeling. And so. Yeah, we, we talked about in the first session this morning about, I don't want to do the deal unless everybody's winning. And so we always, as you just shared, we create win-win solutions in every transaction that we do. Jim asked a question here. He's saying, what type of motivated sellers have you been searching for? So this one was a probate uh, that you mailed out to. What other types of motivated sellers are you, uh, do you search for or focus on? So one of the, honestly, sometimes people come to us when we'll put out street signs and If they're motivated, then they give us a call. But other than that, we also target people that are absentee owners, or in other words, they own the property, but they don't live there. So most of the time, that means that they're some kind of a landlord. We actually, the house that we purchased in March, it was actually a landlord that had a very difficult tenant. And so I was motivated to sell even at a discount. And so that's another big criteria that we're hitting. You know, sometimes if you can target people, if properties that have liens on them. But those are some of the main properties that we're targeting. Excellent. Well, Paul and Austin, I am so proud of you guys. I tell you, you all have just taken your business like to the roof in the last few months and you're, you know, you haven't buried your head, your head in the sand. You're still doing deals. You're in the midst of COVID and et cetera. So, Any final comments, advice, words of encouragement that you'd like to leave the audience with? 
I, would, it, would it be all right if I just quickly run through this next house? Just because this is the prettiest house we've ever done. This oh, one. sure. I'm sorry. I didn't know you had another house. Yeah, th we'll, we'll be quick on this, but because uh, I don't want to hold up your program, but I'm very proud of this house. So anyway, this is a house we came across. And how did we find this one? I'm not even it's remember. actually also a street sign. Was it also, oh, that's right. This is a street sign. This guy called up. And anyway, the situation was the guy ended up moving to his parents' house out on the western side of the state. And just abandoned this house. He just stopped living it, stopped paying the utility bills. It was going toward foreclosure. Everything was like going wrong. All the utility bills, this was on a well. And so they couldn't cut the power without cutting the water. And, or yeah, because it was pumping out some water from anyway. So the bottom line is these guys, they were so stuck. By the time they came back to this house, they'd abandoned it over the winter. All the pipes were frozen, busted all the pipes in the house. It was crazy. So we took this house and we flipped this house. And you can see there's a little bit of difference. I carefully took all the pictures before and after. I tried to stand in the exact same place just so you could kind of get an idea of what we were actually doing here. This is a driveway. It's up at the top of this big hill. That hill is way steeper than it looks. <laughs> so here's the living room, bathroom, shower, bedroom, kitchen. And Very so, nice. Very nice. Yeah. You really Lots, that correct. Yeah. Lots of good oh, things. Lance, you got rid of the border in the kitchen. I can't believe yeah. you got rid of the border. You, you, we probably could have it sitting around somewhere. We can mail it to you if it means all <laughs> it <makes you> <laughs> right, So anyway, just real quick, here's the numbers on it. We bought it for $136,000. Uh, the rehab, that's $52,000. That's actually a deceptive price because there's probably about $14,000 just to bring the mortgage current and also to bring the utilities, which were about it's not probably two and a half thousand, three thousand dollars behind on their utilities, which is crazy because normally they never let it get that far behind, but because uh, they'll just cut off the power at that point. But they couldn't cut the power because it would have cut the water, and if you cut the water, people can't live. And so anyway, I don't know. They for whatever reason they had lots and lots of bills. So about fourteen thousand of that was just getting everything current. And so and then here we are. The seventy thousand dollars is kind of what we made afterward. And again, Jay, not to compare, it doesn't matter the 67 versus 70,000. It's not a contest. But <laughs> anyway, we sold it for $258,000. And so, anyway, my, my purpose is not to brag here at all. It's just to say, you know, we did solve so many problems, including moving all kinds of stuff out of that house. And anyway, there was a lot of problems that were solved. And that's what we do. And that's what we get paid to do. And so, anyway, but I, I love that experience of doing that house and helping that family. And it's the same exact thing. This guy and his wife, when they sat down first, when they first talked to us, they're like, are you guys really going to be able to help us? And by the time they were done, they were so thankful. They said, this is the miracle we've been praying for. So that is all. That's what it's all about is serving and helping people. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that second house. So yeah, back to any final thoughts and comments and what you'd like to leave with the folks. Well, there's definitely lots of opportunity and what you get good at is what you practice doing again and again. Jay is really good at doing what he does because he's practiced doing it again and again. And I remember when I first started doing real estate, I remember thinking, you know, and in fact, I remember I was friends with Austin even when I started this journey. And I remember telling him, I said, you know, I could go get a desk job and I would get really good at it, but I want to be doing something for myself and I want to be getting good at doing things that are helping people and, and actually really making some great money doing it too. And so it's just a matter of starting, taking that first step, trusting in yourself enough to really do it. And it does really take having a team. It does take training. I did not jump into this without training at all. I would never, I could not imagine that I'd be able to navigate this many different things and solve this many different kinds of problems without help. And so I know there's lots of TV shows that make it look like it's the sensational, super easy, anyone can do it. And on some level, yeah, anyone can do it, but you got to have the right resources to know how to solve those problems. Otherwise it ends up just, ends up just getting you into more trouble, it ends up getting your, your sellers into more trouble. And that's not what you need. So it does take working with someone who knows what they're doing. And we've been looking for years for a good mentor, a good coach. And Jay is the best we have found in six years of my looking all over the place. And I've talked to a lot of different trainers. There are a lot of good ones, but I don't know that there's anyone better than Jay Connor in all honesty. So thank you so much, Paul. We do have a couple of quick questions that were submitted before I let you all go. How long do you hold the property before selling it? 
So that's a good question. And let's see here, the Landon House. Wait, how long did that take? That was like a month. That was. Was it well? But we held it. We held it longer. It didn't take long to rehab it. I don't think, if I remember right, we had to hold on to these. Both of these houses were sold using FHA financing, and they. You have to the the current owner has to own it for at least ninety days before it can sell again, or something like that. There was some kind of restriction. So in both of these houses, we actually had already finished all the work that we were going to do on it. We were just waiting for the FHA loan to, to be qualified on the house. So, but I think in both of these cases, it ended up being a 90 day hold period and just by necessity. And uh, the other question we had, uh, I'm sorry, two more quick questions. Anita says, do you still have to go through the inspection process on these rehabs? Absolutely. Absolutely. When we, find the buyer who's going to be buying it. In both of these cases, we just had a someone who came with bank financing. And so they had to have their own inspection and inspections are always kind of the same. They'll find like, you know, they'll, they'll come back and they'll be like, we need you to fix five things. And it'll be, it's always like, it's always five things. It's like never 10 things. It's never two things. It's five things every time. And sometimes it's like, oh, we need earthquake straps on the water heater because it might fall over if there's an earthquake. And also, the light switch cover has a screw loose. So could you tighten that screw? Like whatever, they'll find five things wrong with that house, no matter what you do to it. But they do those inspection report. They come back, let us know. Here are the things we want you to tweak. So. Yeah. And one last question, forget who it was that asked it. They said, what do you mean by street signs? Thank you. That's a great question. I appreciate that. So some people call them bandit signs. And basically maybe you've seen them in your community, maybe not, but Sometimes you'll see these little signs. They might be yellow. They might be white. And they say, sell your house for cash. Sell your house quick or something like that. And it's fascinating. In Washington State, they regulate everything. I mean, everything. You can't get a plastic straw at a restaurant anymore. But they have no problem on this side of the state with you sticking those signs in the ground. So we put them out and no one pulls them up and no one reports it. Like in a lot of communities across the country, they really have a problem with that. For some reason out here, they don't seem to mind. So we use those signs. We put them out there. We've got kind of a, a distinct sign and we do get calls on it. And that's a sign of someone being pretty motivated. Honestly, you think where you're at, if you're calling a sign on the side of the street because you've got a house you need to get rid of, probably have some motivation. You probably think, well, there's a reason I'm not calling a real estate right, a real estate firm right now. There's a reason why I'm not you know, listing the house. There's, there's some unique problems here. So when those signs are put out, just say, hey, you know, call us if you need to sell your house. Anyone who calls that sign, they have a situation. There's some problems that they need some help solving. And so good question, Gail. Paul and Austin, thank you so much. And congratulations on your continued success. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.